Welcome, everybody, to Cinema Royale. I am Travis Hobson, and this is, of course, the official podcast of Punch Drunk Critics. And we are day one post-Oscars. Uh, last night's show, I thought, was was really great. I thought it was fantastic. Had a lot of fun. Uh, thank you to all of you in the D.C. area who came to, all to the Oscar night party at the Arlington Cinema and Draft House. It was great. It was a lot of fun there. Um, not a lot of surprises, I thought. But I thought they did a great job of building suspense to the things that we wanted to see for the most part. And I thought that was a that was a good thing for the night. But joining me today to talk about it is the only person I ever talk Oscars with, Karen Peterson. How are you doing, Karen? I'm all right. How are you? Good, good. You had the benefit of actually being there again in the press room. So tell me about that went this year. Uh, it was, you know, it's such an interesting experience. I This is my third here covering the mm-hmm. press room, I think. Oops, sorry. Um, trying to do too many things at the same time. Um, <laughs> but uh, yeah, this is my third year. Every year is a little bit different. Um, but what is very much the same is that the press room is a bit chaotic when it's when it's hopping. You know, like yeah. we have stretches where nothing's really going on. But once once the winners start hitting that room. Yeah. it just it gets it gets crazy then you're trying to watch the show and watch the interviews happening at the same time and covering it all and it's 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 a lot you know I really I am jealous of the the companies that get to send like three or four people to that room to cover yeah. everything all at the same time you were there for uh, awards daily this year right I was yeah they they asked me to go last year and then I guess they liked what I did so they asked me to go back so well, why wouldn't they like what you did? Of course they did. <laughs> of course they did. Uh, anyway, let's talk about let's talk about the night. So, what, as someone who's because you are the one of the reasons why why I want to talk to you about these things is you are an Oscars expert, in my opinion. You are someone who follows these awards very closely, a lot closer than I do. Um, I wouldn't even watch the show if I wasn't hosting a show every year, <laughs> which I had to. Uh, I probably would be asleep. Uh, but uh, but as someone who's an expert in these things, I, what was your general impression of the night? Well, I don't know after last night if I can still call myself an expert. There were a couple <laughs> of calls I got very very wrong, but um, uh, overall, what I was able to see of the show because I only watched about sorry, um, I only watched probably about half of it. Um, but overall, I thought it was it was good. It's definitely good to have a host and. I mean, a host. Um, And I thought, you know, I mean, there's a lot of of different opinions about Kimmel, but I think when he makes it less about him and more about the event, I think he's actually a perfectly fine host. I think he did a good job for the most part. Um, Definitely felt like things kept moving last night. And and, um, so that was good. I thought it, it really felt like, they wanted to celebrate the art of making movies, which is something that has been lost for the last several years. This is something that so many of us have been kind of complaining about for a while is the fact that it just, it's gotten to, I mean, last year there was the big kerfuffle of wanting to, you know, move those eight categories to a pre-show that went over terribly. Mm -hmm. Uh, So luckily they realized we can't do that again and they didn't but not only did they bring those back into the main show they also had moments where they could really show you some of the work of the the sound team or the editing you know like that montage where they opened it wasn't just showing scenes of the movies it was showing behind the scenes of making these movies which i thought was such a a great thing to do yeah i agree yeah i i agree i i uh before our our show hosting tonight we were lamenting the idea that this might be like this really long show because of, you know because of all the awards that were going to be given away. But I never really felt it. I thought he did a really good job of of you know doubling up on the awards, putting them in each, in each segment together. I thought he did a really good job of, of really streamlining it. And in regards to Kimmel, you know, following his monologue, which I think was like 13, 14, 15 minutes long, it felt long, even though I thought it was pretty funny. Um we didn't see a heck of a lot of him. Like he wasn't there too much. And I think that's a good thing. It's a good thing to see as little of, of the host as possible, focus on the stuff that needs to get done. And uh, this one went off mostly without a hitch, I think. Yeah. I think a good host for an event like this is there to keep the show moving, to kind of jump in when things are, are, you know, if something goes wrong, they can kind of, you know, 
smooth that over right. um those kinds of things but really other than introducing and welcoming everybody there their job really is to kind of keep a low profile and i think i think he he did that pretty well it was definitely an improvement from the last couple of times that he hosted yeah they they, they kind of messed us up a little bit because Tim and I were used to a certain rhythm from the Oscars every year. So at towards the end, when um when they did uh best actor, best actors, and then best picture all in a row, we were a little surprised because there was this there's there was a pretty big moment that happened there at the end. Uh when you had Michelle Yeoh up there and Halle Berry was up there, the two women of color who've won that award over 95 years. And Tim and I were like chomping at the bit to get up on stage to talk about it. And then they went jumped right into best picture. We're like, oh, we're not going to get a chance to talk about it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you know, stuff like that. You wish you could had a chance to really savor that moment a little bit more. But uh, but you know, for those who recognize it, it was still a great moment. So um, let's talk about the the movie that I, that I think was the fan favorite of the night. It certainly was where we were last night. Everything everywhere all at once, uh, winning I believe seven awards. Uh, six above the line awards, I think is huge. I don't think a, a film has done that before. I think the most has been like five. And I think this one won six above the line. Yeah. So that's. Kind of thing. I, uh, yeah, I'd have to fact check that, but yeah. I think that's at least very close to true, if not completely yeah. accurate. And, and you, you would know better than me, but I think that's, I think that's the case. Um, talk about, talk to me about that. Were you surprised by any of its wins? I, I don't think I was surprised by any of it, except for maybe the Jamie Lee Curtis win, but even that one, I wasn't too far knocked for a loop, if I'm honest. Yeah. Um. So the Jamie Lee Curtis win a week ago shouldn't have, like, before SAG, it shouldn't have happened. But she really turned things around. I think with that that SAG win happening yeah. right in the middle of Oscar voting, I think that was where people were just like, yeah, of course we should give Jamie Lee Curtis an Oscar, you know? Um, but uh, but I think if you had asked, you know, like I think any time in the last week, most people had switched to Jamie Lee or at least really thought, even if they didn't fully, you know, I still had Angela Bassett in my predictions, but I really didn't feel like that was a safe bet at all. Mm. um the other one that was surprising a little bit only because of statistics is film editing because mm. for the last um since oh i can't remember which year um but uh since okay the last time i'm trying to think all my stats i'm really tired i'm sorry <laughs> the last time a film won film editing without being nominated for a sound or without winning the sound Oscar was Argo mm. in 2012, but Argo was nominated in both sound categories right. and everything everywhere all at once was not nominated for sound. So for it to win for editing was a bit of a buster uh, stats buster, but also it felt like if something was, if a stat was going to break this year, that seemed like a logical one to predict. Mm. Um, but the, the, Prevailing wisdom was that probably Top Gun Maverick would win because it won sound. Um, but yeah, so that's that's one just because on, you know, on paper, you know, it looked like it would be Top Gun. But um, but everything everywhere was so popular and so loved. And so much of the reason that that movie works is because of the editing. So it makes sense that it would, would win without a sound nomination. Yeah, it, I mean, it's a... Uh... I, I we you and I talked a little bit about it about this last night. Uh, it'd be very interesting to see what the ratings for the show are. I don't know if they've come out yet or not. Um, because there were a lot of popular favorites in this year's this year's show, which we talked about for months that there was going to be a lot of popular favorites this year in here. Um, but it really felt like that last night. And like the room we were in, like everybody was rooting, like had their really their heart set on everything everywhere all at once. Every time every time they were up for something. Um so it, you know it, it's it does it it feels tangibly different honestly the oscars when it has movies that are this popular contending for things but it, it, i can tell from the, just the people i know who are casual moviegoers it feels different yeah i will say there are some preliminary numbers out and it does look like the oscar ratings did tick back up towards 16 million huh. this year which is a big increase from last year um and one of the things that I, I know is the reason why they're they're lower is just because people can't 
can't stream them. And so many people have cut the cord and they don't have access to cable. And so that's that's why that number probably isn't a little bit higher. But if they simulcasted it on Hulu or yeah. Disney Plus, yeah. the numbers would probably be a lot more. And I think a lot of the reason is because of those popular films getting nominated and people feel connected to the Oscars because they've seen those movies. There's absolutely no reason nowadays why there can't be a, a Twitch Oscars simulcast going on I, at, at this point everything should be simulcast in my opinion like every major event you know because there's no single way that people want to take in any form of content so it's, exactly. it's all ridiculous. if the super bowl is doing it there's no reason yeah. why the oscars can't. <laughs> exactly <laughs> exactly uh what did you think did you get a chance to watch any of the oscar speeches like the acceptance speeches for the for uh, last night kihoi kwan had a really great one everyone body for everybody from everything everywhere had a great acceptance speech and they were all oh, yeah. really emotional. He had everybody in the press room crying. Um and so did uh so did Michelle, yo. Um when both both of them and actually Jamie Lee Curtis too, all three of them when they came into the room, they Such all got standing for that movie. Such a yeah. great cheerleader for that movie, Jamie Lee Curtis has been. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it's so true. It's so true. Um yeah, some uh, yeah, Keith's Keith's speech was just I mean, it was perfection. He he's just such a delightful presence. I think um you know, I didn't see very many of the speeches, but um I'm trying to think some of the memorable ones. Um I really enjoyed hearing from the two women who won for the Elephant Whispers, which was the mm-hmm. short yeah. documentary. The first um, Indian production ever to actually win an Oscar, which is a huge deal. And um, so that was very exciting. The the Natu Natu guys, I mean, <laughs> <laughs> absolutely just. Oh, I couldn't wait to see. human beings. <laughs> yeah, I couldn't wait to see that performance to see how they were going to pull that off. Mm-hmm. Uh, and I thought they did a fantastic job. Uh, what, what did you think? Did you get a chance to see Brendan Fraser? Brendan Fraser winning for The Whale. Um, mm-hmm. you know, I, I, I think he's always been, uh, of course, the sentimental favorite, but I do feel like there was a, it was, I, it's at least to me running, going down to the wire. I couldn't tell if it was going to be him or Austin Butler who was going to win last night. I actually still was pulling for Colin Farrell in that category. Oh, yeah. Be not just because I, I liked him so much, but because I really thought there was a chance. And I'd love to see the breakdown of the vote totals there because with, with Austin having won BAFTA and with Brendan doing so many other things, I really thought there was a world where they split the vote enough mm-hmm. that then Colin, who also people loved and people yep. loved that movie. Yep. Um, I really thought it could have, it could have happened. I mean, the issues of Inish Aaron went home empty handed. It went, it got nothing. It got mm-hmm. nothing all night. I thought it would at least, I mean, everything everywhere was such a, a acting juggernaut, you know, it won everything it was nominated for for yeah. for acting. Well, yeah, it did, and and that's one thing. I mean, it was nominated for eleven awards, it wins seven. I've seen a bunch of people talking about how it's swept, and it's like, no, 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 a sweep means it wins everything it was nominated for. Yeah. So the whale swept, <laughs> but... right? <laughs> right. <laughs> <laughs> that is absolutely true. <laughs> but uh, but yeah, no, I mean it. Yeah, so it it just it's interesting to look at the the numbers. So we have ten best picture nominees. And I think four of them went home without a single Oscar. Tar didn't win anything. Tar, the Fablemans, Banshees. Um, yeah, there's. I triangle think there's sad, triangle one. sadness didn't win anything, did it? No. Yeah. There you go. They they couldn't even get one of their stars who died on the in memoriam. So I mean, they, it was a really bad night for them. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they really got snubbed. <laughs> oh man. That's, was it was that a surprise for you? Like I like for me, I was really surprised that Banshees couldn't come away with anything. Because it was nominated yeah. for a screenplay as well, wasn't it? Mm-hmm. It was, yeah. With the with the way that the guilds over the last couple of weeks have just fully come out in support of everything everywhere. Um, I wasn't totally surprised that that ended up winning screenplay, but I did still think there was a chance that Martin McDonough could pull it out just because of the fact that, you know, as you're voting and you love all these movies and 
I don't know. I, I, I tend to think of it like if I had an Oscar ballot, what would I be doing? And I'm like, hmm, I've given everything everywhere a lot of votes. Maybe I should pick something, another movie that I love somewhere else. And I, so yeah. I just, I kind of hoped that would happen. Um, I'm not entirely surprised it didn't, but it's, yeah, it's a little sad. But I mean, Banshee still got, walks away with nine nominations. It's a, yeah, you know, it's ob- a great movie. Obviously, people love it. Obviously, the Academy loved it. They just voted for other things, just a little bit above it, you know? Right. You and I always say, just because something didn't win doesn't mean it's a bad movie. Like, <laughs> Banshee's of Indifferent is an amazing movie. I love that movie. You know, uh, if, I was, if it was up to me choosing for best actor, I mean, I would have picked Paul Mescal for After Sun. But Colin Farrell would have been a close second. That, that's how I would have gone. But, hey, I don't get to choose. And you know what? Yeah. That's fine. They're in there, and I'm happy. They're they're uh, acclaimed films for a reason. Um, yeah. Did you get a chance to watch the performances? I know you were busy back there. Did you get a chance to watch any of the musical performances or anything like that? We got to see Natu Natu, which was just <laughs> perfect. And I got to see Rihanna's performance. Um, those are the only ones that we got to watch in full. I caught part of Lady Gaga's, um, and I was just like, wait... <laughs> <laughs> that's all the words are like i've heard that song so many times i was just like i feel Did like there's some this? lyrics missing here <laughs> this might surprise you karen um but diane warren was there and she had a song that she was performing yeah diane warren i know what? she's never she's she never there nominated? yeah she's never there or anything you know um but she was there and she had a song for a movie that i honestly don't remember <laughs> at all it didn't really get a release it got the qualifying release and then that yeah. was it yeah i got I a lot of questions about it last night i got a lot of questions that. about it. like they're like what is this movie is this i got a lot of questions from people who thought this was women talking because the titles are the same <laughs> or, or very close to the same mm. uh it's like let women talk or talking i can't remember the exact title tell it like a woman tell it like a woman thank you and <laughs> i got a lot of questions from people who thought that it was women talking and I was like, I, 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 it's not the same movie. I know they sound the same. Yeah, <laughs> I haven't seen the movie. Also, I had not actually heard the song. I did hear part of it last night. And I was just like, wait, this is what that song is? This isn't even a good song. <laughs> there are so many. And I love Diane Warren. And I really do want her to win a competitive Oscar one of these days. Right. But uh, not for that. Come on. At this point, it's better that she not win. Yeah. At this point, it's better that she's not winning because she can be the 15, 18, 20 time nominee. But you don't want to be like be the... the Thomas Newman of the, <laughs> the... the score category. <laughs> I'd rather be 0 for 25 than 1 for than like 1 for 20, 1 in 24. <laughs> how about 5 and 52? Wasn't that the number for John Williams? <laughs> Something like that, yeah. <laughs> We love you, Diane Warren, but you don't really need the win at this point. You're, you're good. You're good. I, I mean, think. she gets to come to all the parties anyway. So. Yeah, she'll she'll be there next year with some song for some movie. I would, I would honestly really like her to win just because I love her so much. But she has an honorary Oscar now. The Academy at least finally did that. It's, yeah, that is true. That is true. <laughs> all right. So, any final thoughts on the night? Uh, anything that surprised you or anything like that before we before we head out? I thought it was a great show overall. I, I'm happy with all with all the winners, regardless of whether they were my picks or not. I, I'm ultimately not upset about any one particular thing. I was upset about one particular thing. Oh, what you was know it? What this, it was. this is why I asked you the know question. what it was. I want to hear you say it. <laughs> I cannot believe. I cannot believe that they picked the guy who recreated 1917. Over Mandy Walker for Elvis in cinematography, <laughs> and now we are zero and ninety five in Oscar years of women winning that award. Yes. A woman still has never won cinematography. Women have deserved it. Quit saying, "Well, if they would, you know, shoot a movie that." Yeah, no. Mandy Walker, she's the first woman to win ASC. Uh, she absolutely should have won the Oscar, and I. I, I thought the woman was going to win it last year for Power of the Dog. I, I forgot Ari her name. Wegner. Ari Wagner. Ari Wagner. Yeah, it's two years in a row where I thought it was going to happen, and it didn't happen. Yeah, Greg Fraser beating Ari last year didn't totally surprise me for for a number of reasons. Um, some of it being the popularity of the movie, and some of it being the popularity of the nominees themselves. Mandy Walker is very popular. The the Guild loves her. Um, there's you know a lot of people in the academy love her. They know her. She's been around for a while. 
and she's you know she's really outgoing Ari Wagner is a very reserved person she's yep. you know she does not like to be in the spotlight she's yep. awesome like when you get to chat with her she is so fun she's really sweet Absolutely. Um, but she's very reserved and very much doesn't want to be in in the center of attention at all not that Mandy Walker like wants to be but um she's just a lot easier to to engage in a crowd so yeah um and i just i really thought it would happen and and her work in elvis is so beautiful i mean it's oh, yeah. fantastic it's it's really really great how many awards um, did elvis come away with last night did it get any i'm actually just realizing i think elvis went home empty-handed too. yeah yeah i don't think it did either because ruth carter ended up winning costume the whale won makeup and didn't win any of the technical categories because those were either all quiet on the western front mm-hmm. or, or in most cases or, yeah. yeah i don't think it won anything wow we had five best picture winners go home empty-handed yeah nominees i mean yeah wow. it's crazy that's crazy no. i gotta do some checking on like <laughs> the last <laughs> like what are the stats on that yeah but that was my big thing. I was really happy about All Quiet on the Western Front doing extremely well. Um, I love that movie. I, I know you don't have quite the same feeling about that as I do, but uh, but I was really happy to see that movie do well. Um, yeah, so I was so overall happy with the night. I am shocked about Elvis, though. A little shocked. So that's yep. just anyway. Yeah, crazy well, stuff. But overall, I think there are some really great things that that happened last night, and I think. Uh, you know, Jamie Lee Curtis, when she came into the interview room, she was uh, she was talking about how one of the big things about everything everywhere all at once being recognized the way that it has and being embraced the way it has, not just by audiences, but by the Academy and by all the guilds, too, is that she really hopes that this opens the door for people to be more accepting, like awards bodies to be more accepting of genre films, mm-hmm. which I think it's easy to kind of forget that everything everywhere is a genre film, but it is. And, uh, and so that, that, you know, I, I agree with her. The other thing too, just on the subject of like hoping that people embrace things more Guillermo del Toro uh, wins for Pinocchio. It's only the second stop motion animation film ever to win that category. And, um, and he is, he really had a lot of good things to say about why stop motion animation is so important. Not just is it amazing and beautiful and artistic, but it is more accessible um, as a medium than any other type of animation because even kids, you know, anybody with a, a camera is able to create, right. a, you know, a stop motion film. Yeah. And so he's, you know, wanting to introduce a lot of, of projects. He's got a new scholarship and a new, um, a new program in Mexico to help, you know, foster yeah. this new generation. So hopefully we'll, we'll see more acceptance of, of both of those more genres, more stop motion. Yeah, totally agree. Uh, uh, you and I talked a little bit about, like I said last night, and I, I remember watching everything everywhere, not really even thinking about it as a genre movie. And they did a pretty good job of promoting it as something that wasn't, which I think is a big reason why it's, why it's done so well in the, in the Oscar season, people don't think about it as a genre movie. If they did, it probably wouldn't have done as well. Honestly, it's probably probably unfortunately true. Um, yeah. And um, as far as the Del Toro, you know, when it comes to stop motion, we all we talk about it every time Leica has a film. We talk about how how much work, the punishing work they do to make those movies. It's really extraordinary. And uh, and Del Toro, if anybody can can help put a little shine on that on that form of animation, it's him. So uh, I'm glad to see that his next movie is also going to be a stop motion film as well. And I hope he sticks around in this genre for a while. I'd rather see him make movies like this than watch him make another, you know, Crimson Peak or something. I'd rather watch him make, do stuff like this. <laughs> do it all. Do it all. Do a know, stop can... motion sequel to Crimson Peak. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> we should do a stop motion uh, Pacific Rim. That'd be amazing. I'd see him try something. I'd see him try something that's like not... Like not so not something totally unexpected in like the stop motion realm. I like to see what he would do with that, uh, honestly. But uh, but yeah, Del Toro's fantastic. I'm glad to see him win for that movie. Although honestly, all the best picture, uh, best animated feature movies were really great. I thought yeah. um, it was a strong year for animation. It really was. It really was. 
And uh, I was surprised. And I, this is one year where I actually sat and watched all the like short films too, uh, which I don't always do that. And uh, I was surprised by the real gems. Uh, there were, although I was surprised by the live action win. If I'm honest, uh, uh, I, the Irish one. I actually didn't get a chance to see that one, so it's yeah, like it's like the one of the ones I didn't like out of the group. But but I was I but, predicted it. <laughs> I went three for three in my <laughs> short film. I thought La Pupil was going to win. For people. I thought La Pupil was going to win because it was produced by Disney and had Coron as a producer. So I thought, eh, they'll just take that one for that reason. I it's, thought it well, would until I watched it. I really like it, but I was watching it going, "There's no way people are going to vote for this." <laughs> I wanted, I wanted Night Train to win. Night Train was was Night really, Train. really good. I thought because I had no idea where it was going. Yeah, but anyway. That one was good. So that was last night's Oscars. Uh, Karen Peterson, I am glad you took some time to talk to me about it. Everybody should follow her, uh, well, at Awards Daily, for one, but also at uh, on Citizen, Citizen Dame, uh, your podcast, which is really great. And people should tune into that. Thank you so, so much. Yeah, no, thank you for tuning in. Uh, thanks, everybody, for tuning in to this episode of Cinema Royale. I'm Travis Hobson. You can find me every day at punchdrawncritics.com and, uh, and on loads of other places, too. You don't need me to run down the list. Thanks again, everybody. I will see you next week. Goodbye. Thanks for checking out the show. If you like what we're laying down, please subscribe to our channel and click the bell to receive notifications for all of our latest stuff.